zero factor property. Okay. It says if you have the product and that product is equal to zero, it reminds me of an old riddle. You have two standard US coins. Two standard US coins. Their sum is 55 cents. One of them is not a nickel. What are the two coins? I didn't coin that riddle, but it's a nickel and a 50 cent piece. I thought you said one of them was not a nickel. That's true. The other one has to be. And that's what we get here, see? We have the product of two things, and that's equal to zero. So what does that mean? That says that A is equal to zero, or B is equal to zero. Okay, and that's the zero factor property. In a nutshell, <laughs> wait, there is no 10 factor property. What am I talking about? If you have um, A times B is equal to 10, does that mean one of them has to be zero? No, because this could be a two and a five. Neither one of those is 10. Oh, this could be a, a 1 and a 10, but in that case it worked. It needs to work in all cases. Can you think of multiplying two things together and that product to be zero with one of them not being zero? That's what this says right here. Say this is a 5. What does that one need to be in order for it to be zero? Zero. So you go and you're like, how do I apply this? I'll apply this over here. If I had x plus 3, at times an x minus 2 and that was equal to 0 then you have two things multiplied together and that product is equal to 0. So you go and you separate the two. Don't make me separate you! You say that x plus 3 is equal to 0 or x minus 2 is equal to 0 and x is equal to a minus 3 and 2. Uh, box and squirrel? I don't know. I think it's nuts. Squirrel!